Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video where we are going to look at something called the user view. Uh, what we have done in the last videos is uh, with our HMI, we've got several screens and we need users to access those screens. So far, we have users. I think one is called operator and one, two, three, four, five, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So we can go in here, we can go to this screen, we cannot access the other screen, therefore we would need the boss rights, uh, called boss, uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, and here we go, now I can go into this screen as well. And then we always log off, now I'm logged off. Right now we can only administer, administer means we can only add new users, we can change passwords, we can change the login time, we can change what can a user see, we can only do that if I close the runtime here, so if I get away from the HMI and back into my TAA portal, here in the user administration tab, right? We can only change stuff here. That is a little bit annoying. In reality, you have your TIA project, you download it to the machine, it sits there for the next 15, 20 years. Maybe that's a little bit long, could be, but maybe it's only, only five years or 10 years. Um, you download it, you don't change anything in the software here, you only change that on the HMI. So we should also have such a user view, that's what it's called, on the HMI itself. So not going into this here because we talked about this already last time. The only thing that we need is this administrator. There's a standard login administrator, he's in the administrator group and the administrator group has all rights, right? Especially important right now is the user administration authorization, uh, user administration for managing users in the user view in the runtime. Right? This needs to be active and it is automatically active for the administrator group and for our user administrator. So what we will do now is we will add a new screen uh, and you see there's no template. I also want to use a template on here, properties, template, template one. So it looks like the others. We have a home and a log off button. I want to give it a different name, user admin. I also want to be able from every screen to get into the user admin. So I will take my button here, I will copy paste. Let's put it somewhere here, call it user admin. And this button should lead us to the screen. I can do that here in the properties. I selected the button, right? Properties, events. On the release event, I want to activate the screen and the screen should go to the user admin. So if I run it now and you see all my screens can go to the user admin screen because they all use that template. So let's check this out. I can go to user admin even if I'm not logged in, right? I'm right now not logged in as anyone. I can go to the user admin screen, but it's empty. The only thing we need to add here is, let's go to our user admin screen. Uh, admin screen. There is a thing, <laughs> this one. You see it? The person with the key, the person with the key, that is the user admin view. So I'll take that here, user admin. Uh, come on, give me the name. User view, user admin view, user view. And let's put that here on the screen. Let's make it big, just drag and drop, right? So it looks a little bit nice, perfect. That's it already. So let's save the project. The only thing I want to look up is this administrator. It's administrator and I will give it a password. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, so that I know the password. <clears throat> and let's see, this is the only thing that we needed to change. Let's analyze a little bit what happened now and what we can do with this. So I'm not logged in and I go to the user admin screen. You see it's empty, it's an empty list. If I log in now as the operator, for example, I can click on it and it asks me for the login. I can change the operator stuff here, right? I cannot change the name. I cannot change the group because I do not have this right to that. I can change the log off time. So maybe I only want to be uh, logging off after two minutes, not five. And I could change my password as well, which I don't want to do right now because I have one, two, three, four, five, which is the same password for all my users so I can remember it. So if I log off now, whoop, you see it's deactivated. If I log in as the boss, one, two, three, four, five, and boss. You can see I can do the same stuff for the boss, right? I can also go back and it's still here because I'm still logged in, I log off. And now we go into the admin. So I have this administrator, not case sensitive. The password is case sensitive. 
And you see for the administrator, I have the administrative right for all users. So I can change the groups of users. So for operator, whoops, for operator, for example, I could now say, no, the operator actually should have rights in the boss group. Right? I don't want to change that, but it is there here, boss group. Or you should not be authorized to do anything unauthorized, right? So no, the user should stay. It's in the operator. Was it operator group? I think it's the op operator. It doesn't matter. It's just an example. Um, I could change the log off time for everyone, the automatic log off time. I can change the names of those, right? Only the admin can do it because this is user administration. And I can also change the password. If they forgot their password, I can reset it now. I cannot change the username here for the administrator because that is the standard user. I can change the password though. I can also not change the group of the administrator because it's the administrator group. There is one more user that we do not have in our user the administration here in TIA portal. You see, we only have three administrator, operator, boss, but we have one more here, which is called the PLC user. This PLC user is important. We don't need to change it or anything, but just for your info, because it's right here. This PLC user is important for the communication between PLC and, um, the, uh, and WinCC or the HMI, right? Whatever WinCC application it is. Um, so this, if we don't, wouldn't have that user, they couldn't communicate. It's about data transfer between those two. That's why it's called PLC user. And you can see, I cannot change anything. Even I clicked on the wrong thing. Even if I am the um, uh, administrator, I cannot change anything except the log off time, which doesn't actually matter because the PLC ca takes care. So. I can click log off, I'm not the administrator anymore, and I could log in with any other or with the administrator again, done, All right? Very good, every group, uh, every user can only be in one group, just saying, don't forget, every user can be in one group, but you can make as many groups here as you want with each group having as many rights as you wish to, right? And the correct rights. But for this, you can watch the other video that I made on this. And yeah, that's it already. That's for the user view here, for user administration using the HMI. If I power down this HMI right now, because it's a simulation, it won't save those. The next time I boot it, uh, changes will be gone, right? If I click on the next line here, I can make new users. New, oh, I have to use this. New user, right? I can give this a password. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here we go. I have a new user. I can give it him a group, right? And now the user is there. I can log out and I can use my user new. And one, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm logged in as new, right? The problem right now is I am using the simulation. So if I close this and I reopen the simulation here, the new user will be gone. I think it will be gone. Let's see, administrator. And yeah, the new user is gone. For an HMI, of course, that's not the case there. It's the users are saved in the um, in the EEPROM of your, or in some kind of memory area. I don't know exactly in which one of your HMI. So even if you power off and power on, the user should be there. If you load a new program into the HMI, could be that you override the user, so you got to be careful when loading. There's a pop-up or so that uh, says, hey, be careful now, and you have to put a checkbox, and so just be careful when downloading. Not to click the wrong thing, of course. So that's been nine minutes now. I hope you learned something about the user view here. This is really common, and it's almost used everywhere, but no one really knows about it. Uh, that's how you do it. Very easy, very simple. If you liked the video, if it helped you, leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Just say hi to me. I will say hi back. And um, maybe, yeah, probably. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>